If you want to study for the MCAT, should you spend more time studying content or doing practice questions or both? What is the best study strategy? Hey guys, my name is Jack Weston, and today I'm going to answer that. I'm going to figure out with you what is the best study strategy for the MCAT. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been helping students with the MCAT for over 10 years. And there is really one piece of advice that I think applies to everyone. There's one thing that I think everyone should know before they study for the MCAT. I find that this one piece of advice is the advice that any retaker would tell you. So if, if you know any student who's retaking this test, if you have a peer, a friend, a family member who's retaking the test and you ask them, hey, what do you wish you did different, right? They would probably tell you this. Do more practice questions. That's it. Do as many practice questions you possibly can in about three or four months. The person who does the most questions in three to four months and has the time to review them properly and understand their mistakes is the person who ends up with the higher score. Period. That's it. Now, how should you do content review or should you? My answer to that is don't do content review. Don't waste your time on content. If you're studying content before you start practice questions, you're simply wasting your time. I like to joke with my students. I always tell them, look, if you're studying at a library and someone asks you, what are you doing? Don't tell them you're studying for the MCAT. Tell them you're wasting your time because seriously, you are. You're passively studying for a test that requires a lot of active, like just mental effort. And passive studying is not going to cut it. Yeah, you might be weak on some subjects, and I'll tell you how to, you know, kind of improve on those subjects, but trust me, content review is not the way to go. I'm assuming that if you're studying for the MCAT, you have gotten at least an A or a B in all of your pre-medical courses. So biology, physics, chemistry, biochemistry, if you've taken that, you might not have. Psychology, sociology, maybe you took the AP equivalent. Regardless, I, I'm assuming you've taken those classes and have taken finals for all of those classes. Essentially, you know the basics of all of the major topics on the MCAT. If that's the case, go straight into questions. If that's not the case, let's say you didn't do so well, you got a C or an F, or you had a bad professor who barely taught you anything, you're not ready to take the MCAT. You need to give yourself more time to learn that content but don't consider that your MCAT study time. Your MCAT study time is three to four months of just doing questions. That's the study strategy, just doing questions for three to four months. If you're weak on some subject because you really didn't learn it at all, like let's say you didn't learn any physics, then spend about a month, month and a half, reading books, doing questions, just trying to catch up. You're essentially catching up with topics that you should have learned before you're studying for the MCAT. Then jump into three to four months of MCAT questions, just doing questions every day, all day, basically doing as many questions you possibly can while having time to review them, right? Quality review is super, super important. You don't want to just do questions and not look at the solutions and not understand what you did right or wrong. I mean, again, you should make sure you understand how you got to the right answer, whether you got it right or wrong, right? So if you got it right, you should still review it. And if you do that for three to four months, you're probably going to do really, really well because you're going to get faster at answering questions. You're going to get better at understanding the content. Trust me, the best way to learn content is to practice. Now, let's say you don't know every single thing that is in physics or bio or, or chem and you've taken these classes, right? Let's say that you have some deficits in the content. That's okay. Everyone does. No one's perfect. No one understands this stuff 100% going into MCAT. That's why when you do questions, you'll see what you're weak on. And then you can do more review on those things that you're specifically weak on. So let's say you're weak on 
alpha decay or beta decay, which is discussed in physics. If you know you're weak on that, you're going to get some questions, right? You're going to do questions on it. That's when you can go and do content review. So once you miss a question, do content review on that particular topic, and then do even more questions to make sure you solidify and strengthen that topic. And that way, whenever you see alpha decay or beta decay or whatever, you're not going to have any problems with it because you've studied that specifically. You've done extra questions on that specifically, and you're done with that. So if you can just do this for three to four months where you just try to pinpoint your weaknesses and make them your strengths, you're better off than passively studying things you've already studied, right? Like knowing translational motion and, and stuff that you already probably know and you don't need to waste more time on. That's probably the most effective way to study, and that is the best MCAT study strategy you can use. If you need help with the MCAT, you can check out my online test prep company, jackweston.com, and you'll see more study strategy tips. Or if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll answer it. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, and tell people about it. Thank you for watching.